Welcome to Skillbuilder, I'm Dylan Garth and I'm back with another camera review, another CCTV camera review. Now, you may remember three years ago I did a review of the Foscam Power Over Ethernet CCTV system that uses a network video recorder. We also had a look at the Nest system, but now we're looking at cameras that you put inside your house. Now this is the Foscam R4M, and this is a good point to mention. This is not a sponsored video. I saw this camera from Foscam. It's only £99 and it seems to have quite a few features, so I thought I need to check this out. It has a 2K 4 megapixel resolution. It has remote control by an app. It pans 350 degrees, that's side to side. It tilts 100 degrees, that's up and down, and it can zoom in as well. It has two-way audio, push alert, so you can see when something's happened. 26 feet of infrared night vision. All of this is controlled through your app. This is marketed as a Wi-Fi camera, but you can connect it by Ethernet, which is what I'm going to do because I've got so many devices connected through Wi-Fi in the house. It's too crowded, so I'm just going to plug it into the Ethernet because I just love that plugged in feeling and everything's going to be fine. Now you've got storage options. You've got a micro SD card slot on the side of the camera here, and it says that it's limited to 128 gigabytes. Now I know you can get a one terabyte card, so I'm not sure why they've limited it to 128. It could be something that they fix with a firmware update in the future. So the second option is to use an MVR. Now I've been using the Foscam MVR for three years now. It's very good. It's got a one terabyte hard drive. I've never had any problems with it. Some people say, ah oh, yeah, but what if someone breaks in and they'll disconnect the MVR? I don't think anyone breaking in is going to know what an MVR is. And I'm sure they're not even going to find it because I've got it hidden away. So I kind of like the MVR option. You've also got Foscam's cloud record service. The main benefit as far as I can see with this one is that you're recording the footage off-site so nobody's going to be able to tamper with your footage and even if they come in and they disconnect the camera you've still got that recording the last recording that was sent to the Foscam cloud service before it was interrupted so you've got your uh, your evidence if you like now with the Foscam cloud service you get eight hours of free storage and this is triggered recording so if something happens that's what gets recorded to the cloud so you could find those eight hours could be covering a month's worth of activity and for a lot of people that's going to be enough so if you want to find out what the recording plans are and the prices have a look in the description and we'll link through to those okay time for an unboxing much smaller than i thought it'd be that's handy come on out you come Come on! Ah, I got it. We go. Network cable, antenna, wall mount bracket, power supply, plugs and screws. Okay, so let's type in Foscam, and this is the one here. I download it. Okay, so we've got to create an account. I created one earlier, so let's just skip to the next stage. So I updated the firmware and it got stuck at 5% for a long time, but when I rebooted the camera, it had the latest version on it, so that worked out okay. So I've just plugged the camera in. Hello, Foscan. Hello, Foscan, there we go. So it's happy with the power, it's happy with the network connection. I'll tap on add camera. IP camera makes it easy because I can see the picture of the camera. Have I heard the hell at Foscam? I have, so I'm going to go next. So now it's time to scan the QR code, which is on the base of the camera, um, but it picks it up really quickly. I've done this before. It's really, really tiny. Only needs a little sniff of that QR code and bam, it's in there. Ready for wired connection. Connected, dancing robot there. And now it's asking me for a name for the camera. Doorway. I'm gonna save that. And now hopefully it's gonna find it. You've gotta set up a password and a username for this camera. Ah, and there we go. You can see the camera already. And you can see it's a really wide angle lens. Unfortunately, it's showing what a total tip this room is. I thought I was safe. You could only see this bit here, but the first icon enables you to move the camera left and right. And it's very super wide angle. Uh, you can also control the movement of the camera just by moving your finger over the video frame. So. If I move my hand over the picture there, you can just touch in whichever direction you want to go in. Then you tap the button in the middle, it resets it to the center position. So the next icon along is uh, take a snapshot, 
Press that, you can see it says captured successfully in your album. The next button is the two-way radio. So this is when you're at work and you might want to speak to somebody at home. You just hold your finger. Hello, Hello. there we go. I don't know whether you can hear that, but it's my voice on a delay and it's gonna feed back horribly soon. So I'm gonna take my finger off. Now you can see there at the top in the display, an abnormal motion detected. So obviously it's picking me up because it knows that I am a human invader possibly. So it's just thrown up that alert. So the next option along is the record button. Now this is a constant record button. What it's doing automatically is just saving those little snippets. And in this case, I have put a micro SD card in the camera and it's automatically capturing all of those moments and saving it to the SD card. But if I want to record for a longer and I want to record directly onto my phone, this is the button that you press here. So there we go. We've recorded that for a little while. I'll stop that. So what I'm going to do is save some preset positions and you'll figure out why later. So if I do a pinch to zoom, see now that's really good. Everyone's familiar with pinch to zoom, but that's really fluid. I mean, bear in mind, this is a remote connection. That's really quite good. So I'm going to save that position there. My lovely collection of Vera screwdrivers and WD-40. So we'll save that to one of our favorite presets. I'm going to zoom out, go to the other side of the room, slow but steady. So if we have a look over here, we'll zoom in. You can see the Ipswich badge there. Oh, look at this. This video is full of product placement, isn't it? Look at that, big wipes. My clumsy fingers there. Okay, so I'm gonna save that as a preset. And then I'm gonna zoom out. And then I'm gonna have, say, looking up at the ceiling. I'm gonna to return to the center. Okay, so the next icon along is the three dots. And I go to that, you can see that we've got motion detection on and sound detection on. I'm gonna turn the sound detection off because this is gonna be a bit much if it goes off every time it can hear something because it will be going off when someone rings the doorbell or whatever. Now this is what we looked at earlier. When I set those positions as my preset favorites, they now appear and you can see what position they're in. So if I tap the first one, the camera is now gonna go over to the left into that preset position and hopefully it will zoom. Oh, it doesn't do the zoom, that's interesting. Okay, so it does the position, but not the zoom. Maybe that's something they'll add with a firmware update. So now if I tap on the second preset position, it just slowly saunters over there. It's not in any kind of hurry. Okay, that's good. And then the last position up there. The last option here is cruise. So if I turn on cruise and I go horizontal, it now just bounces back and forth like it's in uh, surveillance mode. It's just cruising to see what's going on in the room. And that's actually a really good, I haven't seen that before in any CCTV camera. So there we go, it looks up, down, turn that off, presets. So that I guess will just cruise through all the preset positions. So now let's have a look at some of the settings underneath the cog. So you can see there at the top, you've got the My Plan. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about prices, but let's just have a look and see. So if I wanna record, say a week's worth, that's gonna cost me 40 pounds a year. So I, you know, it's, I'm not gonna use it, but um, if recording offsite is your thing, the prices aren't too bad. SD card, now, as I say, I've got a 64 gigabyte SD card in there. You can see all of the files that it's recorded. If we wanna have a look at my alarms, you can just tap on the file name. It looks like it's in black and white. Let's go for one of the newer ones. Oh, that's in color, so there we go. So that's the playback from the SD card. And of course you could take the SD card out and plug it into your computer and look at the files that way if you want. You can make a backup of them and then stick it back in there. Uh, but we will look at that, that limit on the 128, as I said, because you know if I'm gonna use this all the time, I wanna put a, the biggest card possible in there and just let it record forever. The next tab along is firmware. You can see that the firmware is up to date. You can share your camera so that other people can access it. For the network settings here, this is where we could then transfer control over to Wi-Fi and get rid of the cable. Advanced settings. It automatically detects if it's dark enough to go into infrared nighttime mode, but if you didn't trust that, you could set a schedule here to make sure it comes on at the right times. I have got all of the overlays on. I've got status LED, I've got voice prompt, and I've got the speaker volume turned right up so that when I do that two-way communication, 
whoever's home is gonna hear me loud and clear. Okay, so now that we've sussed out, everything is working fine. We're gonna take it into the other room. We're gonna try it out with the Amazon Echo and see if Alexa can control it. Now we're gonna to test to see how smart this thing is. So I have now got my Echo Show here. I have added the Foscam skill. If we load up the app, so you can see that is the doorway. When you look at the Foscam skill for the Echo, you can see that there's lots of people saying couldn't get it working and there's lots of one star reviews. Now I couldn't get it working at the first attempt either, but you've got to persevere. And one thing you need to check is if you click on the cog here and you go through to advanced settings, you've got to go to smart control, switch on the smart device. I'm not going to say its name because otherwise it's going to ask me what I want. Make sure that you've got the right name. In this case, it's the doorway. And even after I'd done all of that, it didn't work until I'd left it for five, 10 minutes. And then I asked it and it then worked. Here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Alexa, show me the doorway. sound turn down there. And there we go. And that's pretty good. So I've been using this for about a week now. And the first thing I noticed was that the alert was going off all the time. And that's because I missed one very important feature. And that is to tell it to look out for human movement rather than any movement. So it's picking up things like the sun going in and out. It was picking up the dog. So sometimes it would just go off for no reason because I had the sensitivity set to very high. So if you go through the menu and just make sure you've got it set to human, then you won't end up with a card full of the sun going in and out. The image quality is pretty good. The pictures are very sharp. Uh, you will notice there's a slight degradation in the picture when you pan, and that's because like most CCTV cameras, it uses quite heavy video compression. So I've just turned it on again. You'll see how quickly it picks up that Wi-Fi. If you want to move it to a different room, you don't have to do any configuration. It'll just fire up. Hello, Foscam. Wireless connection succeeded. There you go, wireless connection succeeded. So you can unplug it, plug it in a different room in the house and you're back up and running without any configuration. Now I started this video by saying it's only a hundred pounds and I've since looked online and I can see that there's quite a few cameras that are cheaper than this one, but this one definitely has the most features for this type of camera. And also it's very easy to set up. So that means that if I wanted to get one for my dad, that I can give that to him and he can set it up and I'm not gonna have to do any tech support. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy these gadget videos. I've got a few more lined up, so don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you haven't seen our other CCTV camera videos, you can check them out here.